The biggest MMO of all time is Quinfall. Wow. Hey everyone, what's going on? So a couple weeks ago, I released a video taking a look at every new MMO scheduled to come out in 2024. Now on Quinfall, that- Quinfall, yeah, it's in Path of Exile. Video, I had a few comments where people were asking why I neglected to include mm -hmm. the Quinfall. And that's a mm -hmm. really good question. If you're unfamiliar, the Quinfall is an upcoming fantasy medieval inspired MMO yeah. being developed by Valrec Technology Inc. Beyond the standard content and feature offerings seen in most MMOs, Quinfall- I have very low expectations for this game. And whenever the trailer footage comes on, I'll tell you why boast a few interesting claims. They say to have built the world's largest MMO map with a total play area of 2,016 square kilometers, which frankly is, is a bit crazy. To, to put this in perspective, that is roughly 54 times the size of Skyrim, which is 37 square kilometers. It's about 10 times the size of World of Warcraft, which was 207 square kilometers. Wow it's also about five times the size of Lord of the Rings Online, Black Desert Online, and Elder Scrolls Jesus. Online, which are all roughly 400 kilometers squared. Yeah, and it's about twice huge. the size of the original Guild Wars, which was a thousand square kilometers. So yeah, if it's true that the Quinfall is in fact 216,000 square kilometers, yes, that would be one of the biggest MMOs we've ever played. Now they say that the- I am worried about this because I don't think that that matters. And I think that a developer that focuses on things that don't matter doesn't understand what they're making. I don't care about the size of the map. It's about how the size is utilized. Like World of War, this should not be a selling point. World is going to consist of five regions, each with their own Starfield, climates yes. and major cities. There's a day-night cycle and changing weather. Both the weather and seasons will directly impact mm -hmm. the world, like summer and winter can affect the population of plants and animals, or there'll be floods and droughts that can change the size of bodies of water. Yeah. There's going to be community-driven features like trade routes with caravans. You can visit player shops and taverns. There's going to be multiplayer board, mm -hmm. dice, and other mini games. They've got this uh, focus on exploration and discovery, like you'll pick up hints and clues by solving puzzles or deciphering codes, and you'll use those to internet. find the entrances yeah. to hidden areas, secret passages, and even dungeons. There's going to be dozens of professions with various forms of gathering, crafting, and farming. You can even hire NPCs or other players to work for you. That's and then beyond the medieval fantasy setting, they've also shown some steampunk elements with things like zeppelins, trains, and massive mechanical mechs. Their survival games. Yeah, I, I thought this was really weird. It's like, how do you have a game that has like a guy with like a sword and shield uh against like a mech warrior right how does this work i, I don't i don't because like you're able to go through time right and like i just i i can't see something like this making sense well, mechs, their survival game style gathering and base building. You see players placing down individual blueprint pieces for a building. There's an ocean as well that's said to be as big as the open world. You can build ships and sail to new uh -huh. islands, fight giant enemies, as well as the elements dealing with winds and this huge is really waves. Cool. You'll also encounter other players and pirate factions while yeah, at this sea. Is cool. The game will be utilizing an action combat system with basic and heavy attacks, uh -huh. dodges, blocks, and various spells and abilities. There will be PvE activities from yeah, this fighting basic really cool. enemies the mage to attack. bosses. We've seen sandworms, krakens, and dragons, and there's open world PvP. So as this is the part that I was talking to you guys about, is that I remember whenever this game came out and they were showing it, this entire Atlantis area is completely comprised of just assets taken directly off of the Unreal Store. There's nothing here that's really original. And so as soon as I saw that, I thought to myself... Oh, this doesn't really look that good. So, well, the reason why I say that is that I just think that's a pretty good indicator of a game being bad. Are there games that are good that have those? Yes. Are there more good games that don't have those? Yes. Like, it, it's a red flag. To build an entire city? Come on. What are we talking about? Well, with various types of medieval-themed combat, with like ship battles, island skirmishes, and castle sieges. So those are the main highlights and there talking points for the good. Quinfall. And yeah, You're there's... just hating? You don't realize the potential? I will play this game when it comes out. I want this game to be good. 
I'm just skeptical right now. I'm not sold on the game. That's all. I'm not. Sorry. Some pretty interesting stuff here. It's an interesting list I of bullet to points and features. So the question remains, though, why didn't I include this game on my list of the upcoming MMOs uh -huh. in 2024? Well, frankly, it didn't even cross my mind. Quinfall had simply fallen off my radar. Mainly, this was due to the fact that I remember Quinfall first hearing off. about the game in 2022 with that official reveal yep, trailer. Yep. And at that time, the game was said to be an alpha and had only been in development for one year. So naturally, I thought for sure it was going to be another one of those MMOs we were learning about super early and it wouldn't release for another five yeah, plus years Yeah, they said it was going to be out in like more. a year. But it turns out... I was wrong. The Quinfall is actually coming out later this month with a scheduled release date of January. What the fuck? Wait, what? January 30th, 2020. January 30th? Holy shit, are you kidding me? Four. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Wait a second, Force. I thought you just said the game started development in 2021. And I did, that's correct. According to the developer's website, the Quinfall began production in January, 2021. Doing a little bit of quick napkin math here, and uh, yep, that pretty much confirms. That was a mere three years ago. So the next question you might have, is three years enough time to make an MMO? Let's find out. To which out. my baseline default answer would be 100%. Absolutely not. <laughs> no way. At least not historically true. Most of the MMOs you probably know and yeah, all have this is it over the years have had an average. Like, and I said this before. I remember like the the aesthetic for this is incredible. I love the way this looks. This looks amazing. AI generated game. Well, I don't care about that. Like if here's the thing, I I, I will play this game for sure. I want to try it out. Like. Because if it's bad, I'll just get a refund. Who cares? Who gives a fuck? In time of at least five years prior to releasing. World of Warcraft was in development for five years before it came out. Star Wars The Old Republic had a six-year development cycle. Yeah. Guild Wars 2 also took six years to develop. And The Elder Scrolls Online was in development for seven years before it came time. out. And those are just a few examples of some well-known MMOs made by mostly AAA studios with plenty of funding and large development teams. About as well I mean, I, I, can we just go back? Remember what I always say? What do I care about in games, gentlemen? What do I care about in games? What is the beginning and the end of games? Gameplay. I'm talking about raw motherfucking gameplay. That is the only thing I care about. Like, I don't care. Oh, the story is so good. Oh, but the systems. I don't give a fuck. How does it play? are just a few examples of some- Look at the way these NPCs move. Their movement doesn't match their feet. The way they fall down and react to getting shot is weird. Well-known MMOs made by mostly tri- Get ready. Here we go. Actually, that, to be fair, that actually looked pretty good. Like, uh, in slow motion. Studios Watch with plenty of funding and large development yeah, no, it was this, it was this one that was a problem. That, that's right, yeah. The, actually, yeah, to be fair, that one looked okay. Uh, it's this one that I was talking about. Yeah. It was about as well... He's just, he's moving at a rate that's, that's not, like, the same as his movement speed. Equipped as he's you sliding, can expect yeah. to make a game of this scale. Took, on average, five to seven years. I think maybe... I don't, uh, I don't believe that something like this takes a set amount of time. I think that a lot of studios that make video games are probably massively under, uh, like they're, they're badly managed. I just assume that people that take a long time to do things, it's not because it takes a long time, it's because it's badly managed. With the exception of Guild Wars 2, as I'm just not certain how big or well-funded ArenaNet was at the time that game was in production, mm -hmm. even if they were small and not funded, yeah, that's, it took them six years to make the game. So yes, as a baseline, my response would be, I would say three years is not a lot of time to make an MMO. It's most certainly probably not enough time to make, quote, the biggest MMORPG in the world ever, or whatever Quinfall is calling themselves. Although, as we also know, size has no bearing on quality. No. That's been proven out many, many times over the years. You could have Starfield. Starfield, Starfield, Starfield. Let's cut the Starfield. Are we gonna cut the Starfield? Looks like we're not. We should have.
an absolutely massive game and just nothing to do in it. Like, maybe you've got billions of planets with nothing on them. for example. But you know what? I won't say it's impossible. I, th I would say that if you have a large enough team, if you have enough funding, yeah. and if you have a reasonable scope for your game, yeah, sure, maybe you could make a decent MMO in three years. But at the same time, I would state Well, here's the problem with a game of that scale. Is that, can it handle that many people in a zone? Can it have that many people on a server? So let's say the servers are the same size as the servers for any other game. Okay. Well, then you have the same player base that spread out 10 times more apart from each other. So that's a big problem, isn't it? How many people can do something together at the same time? How many people can play together on the same, uh, on the same area? Ah. The odds are stacked against you because, yes, historically, every big MMO that we know of to date took much longer, almost twice as much time to actually make before releasing. So then the next question except for the remake of Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, if you look at what they did, what Yoshi P did with uh, Final Fantasy XIV, is he set out a flowchart, and everybody showed up and worked for probably, let's be real, 8 to 12 hours a day, and they fixed that fucking game in an extremely fast time frame. A ridiculously fast time frame question is, what do you know about the studio who's making this game, the people making the Quinfall? Well, we actually know a fair bit. That, yeah. So the Quinfall is being developed by Varek Technology Inc. So now, possible. according to the About Us section of their website, they were founded in January 2021 and aimed to become one of the pioneers of the industry with advanced technologies surprise. and AI systems, beginning with the release of, quote, the biggest MMO. This is, again, another problem that I have with this is that a focus on advanced technologies and AI systems this is not what people play video games for. This is what investors invest in video games for. Like these are things that if you are a person that works at one of these like investment firms, you hear this and it's like, uh, where do I give hundred million dollars? Where, who can I give it to? Who can I, I, I heard AI where, who, who, what's, who wants it? Who wants hundred million dollars? Right. But the truth is, this is not a value to the user. RPG universe in the world to the global audience with our new game, Quinfall. Now that is the summary of how the studio describes themselves, their vision and goals. Uh, pretty standard stuff. You'll see this on just about every About Us section from any developer. Yeah, exactly. Things get a bit more confusing though when you scroll down the page to the what is Quinfall section. Here is verbatim how they describe the game. Okay, here it is. Let's Strap in it. for this one. Quinfall's fateful doors have been opened again. again. Of this land where wars and chaos live forever, the life that would determine and its destiny once again challenged time. His destiny is a cursed crown. It is to deliver the lands in which chaos reigned to the sharp... I feel like Dark Souls is more understandable than this. Like, I, I can understand Dark Souls better than this. Like, what the fuck? sword of justice in this process against he was ready to destroy anyone who came out but was the sword of justice really perfect this journey that will determine the fate of middle earth this fact that will be rewritten with no, right I and wrong this. no oh, i want to see it i can't believe they wrote something this stupid it says story explore the impact of the monstrous god pelagonius the dragonborn god krells and Krius. This isn't it. It's Google translated their Turkish. Oh, they just deleted it two minutes ago. Well, no, I mean, I don't think that's really like, that's not so bad. If it's translated from Turkish and every other explanation of the game on their page seems reasonable and coherent, then I'm actually not going to hold this against them. It was probably just badly translated because nothing else reinforces the bad communication. Are you ready to start over? Your choices will determine the course of the story. Choose what you will rule. Pretty clear that they didn't get around to asking yeah, a single native English speaker to proofread this because, frankly, it's incoherent, a bit of a jumbled mess, and makes no sense really whatsoever. I read sure. this over in my head about 10 times in a row, trying to piece together some idea of what they were trying to mm -hmm. convey. Couldn't come up with anything. In fact, the more I read it, the more confusing it got every single time. It mm -hmm. almost feels like 
something that was AI generated. Like this description of the game seems like it was just put in an AI. Somebody thing. really wants me to go to the website. You guys really, really want me to go to this website. I'm gonna go to the website. The Quinfall. Uh it's there. No, it's there. I see it. This is literally word for word. I don't think this is enough for me to really shit on them. Because I'm actually going to I I'm going to assume that this was either badly translated or just badly done. And the reason why I I'm going to allow this and I'm not gonna like shit on them for it is because everything on their Steam page seems to be coherent and it makes sense. And it seems like the thing just wasn't updated because the last update here was 2022. I don't think this is like really a strong point of reference that we can use to say that they're not serious about the game or that they're in incompetent. Like, yeah, it sounds really stupid on the website, but the website is an outlier and it also seems to be depreciated. So, ah. And spit out the other side, but That's I'm not, not going to put a stake in that claim. Um, we'll give them the benefit not of the enough. doubt and just chalk it up to like a bad Google translation sure. or something, as the company is Turkish, which we'll cover here in the next bit. So, looking a little further down the page, we see this timeline highlighting the developer's history. 2022 yep. is when they actually changed names from previously being known as Arena Game Studio to the now used Varek Technology. Now, this was later described in interviews done by the developer that they this name change was meant to highlight their focus of using tech and AI and not just being a game developer. Not exactly what you want to hear from people making a game that you might be interested in playing, but there you go. Well, it's that not was what you don't want to hear either. It has nothing to do with what you're... Like, whether AI is used in a game or not has no bearing on my enjoyment of the game. I don't care about AI. I care about a good game. And, like, this is not something that is a value to the consumer. The motivation behind the name change. The year prior in 2021, we see additional confirmation uh -huh. that this is when they began development on the Quinfall. But then also in 2021, we noticed that they had canceled the production of yeah, another this, game known as Kyra it? Online. And here's where things actually get okay, interesting. Here we go. This throws a wrench in pretty much everything else Ooh. I was uh, thinking about this game up until this point and the studio. So Kyra Online began development in 2019. This was an MMORPG based on Turkish mythology. I was actually Right. able to find quite a fair few videos of the game okay. and while it certainly looks dated almost like it released 20 years ago yeah, it also one. seems to have been an actual real functional game yes it is very low budget looking almost yeah. like it came out in the 90s or something like a 90s mmo and it's not something that i could see myself playing in the year 2024 but i also wouldn't say it looks terrible just old and low budget I i've seen way worse games I i'll put it that much like i look at this and it almost feels like what i remember in my head ashron's call having looked like when i played that back in 1990 yeah the game doesn't look that great I mean, but it's an older game. It's whatever. It, it's a real game, though. And I know it looked way worse, but you know when you think about how, what your vision of a game when you played it many, many, many years ago? That's the vibe that I get from this. This really uh -huh. feels like I'm looking at a late 90s, early 2000s MMO, yeah, a yeah. pre-WoW MMO, basically. This looks like a, a, a pre-WoW MMO that could have existed in that time frame. Sure. And, and, and it seems fine. It seems to run fine. We're seeing like a lot of like AOE grinding. There's yeah, some examples okay. of large-scale PvP. Again, I know it looks super low budget. I know it looks old. I know it looks just... It doesn't look particularly modern day great, but it's still clearly a functioning game, right? Like it was running, it was functioning, people were playing it. I think what's the most impressive though is that Kyra Online began development by a single dude. This was a one-man project wow. and then over the course of 2019 more people were added to the team. Then in 2020 after having one year in production Kyra Online entered closed beta and this is- Holy fuck. Maybe these guys just work. Maybe that's why they think the game's gonna come out early is because they're gonna work on the game. What released. That's kind of crazy to me that they, they worked on an MMO for a year, starting yeah. with one person, built the team. Over the course of the year, they made this MMO. I know you, a lot of you probably think it looks like crap, but it's actually impressive to me. No, I mean, this is really... I, I'm going to be honest. The movement and the player interactions in this game actually seem to be pretty good. Like, it's, it's not good in terms of, like, a traditional game standard, 
But if you contextualize it around it was developed by one person in one year, this is phenomenal. They made this in a year and released it into beta. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying this is the best looking game ever at all, but I'm just saying it's actually somewhat impressive to me. Now, this was a very small scale beta, which is probably why you've never heard of it before, because the game yeah. was only available in Turkish and appears to not have uh, been played much, if at all, outside of that region. Sure. But when I looked online, what little discussion I could find surrounding Chiron Online actually seemed fairly positive. Seems like the people wow. who played this actually thought it was decent. In fact, as we now know, in the following years, using Chiron Online almost like a proof of concept for their tech and their work on live service and MMO servers and uh, and networking, they were then able to obtain the funding from Turkish investors to start development on the Quinfall. Now, again, there is actually right. hours worth of Kyra Online gameplay right. that you can go watch for yourself on YouTube. Just do a quick search. The game even had its own Twitch directory at one point, although unfortunately it appears no VODs have been stored there. But yes, I, I have to reiterate this. I know it looks super low budget. It was. No, but I, am I, I, I don't think that it's problematic at all. Like, here, let me see if I can find this. This is what Sea of Thieves looked like whenever they originally showed it to investors and stuff. Look at this. It's proof of concept, yeah. So pretty impressed with what they turned out after only a year in development. From what I read, they never charged for anything either. <laughs> like if you're thinking, Force, was this a bait and switch? It doesn't appear to happen that either. Uh, yeah. There were no founders packages or in-game stores, far as I can tell. They just held various public beta tests throughout 2020 to a predominantly or entirely Turkish audience, but ultimately decided to cancel that game and focus on their efforts on the Quinfall, which is releasing to a global audience. So they're looking to appeal to a larger scale i want to add here as well when it comes to like the studio's current size it's no longer one person or just a handful of people like it was for Chiron online their website links to the official linkedin page where it states that the company is made up of somewhere between 50 and 200 people doing a little further digging that's I've a lot of fucking people found a few articles and interviews where they actually specified the exact number of people currently employees. working on the Quinfall is 56. Now, this was like in the middle of 2023 uh -huh. where that was information was pulled from. So it's quite possible they have scaled up um, in the months since then. But just as a quick recap, so the Quinfall developer Varak Technology used to be called Arena Game Studios. Under that, I think that like, especially if they have investors behind them and this game is on Steam, I would feel safe at least buying the game and trying it out. If, if I were you, if you want to, because you can always refund the game and tons of people refund games after the two hours and they can just get their money back anyway. Like, look at what Steam did with the day before. Like, that was actually like a huge bro move that Steam did for everybody. They gave everybody all of their money back pr proactively because we are entering an age of games as scams. Absolutely. But as long as you can protect yourself... You can take the risk. That name, their first official project, Kyra Online, was this MMO that was in development yeah. from 2019 to 2021. And yeah, while it looked dated and low budget, it does appear to have been a real functional game that people played and evidently enjoyed. Right. But then in 2021, they got funding based off of Kyra Online as proof of concept and began development for the Quinfall, which now has been in production for coming up on three years. And with all of that said, like I mentioned, this kind of threw a wrench in what I was thinking and kind of my, my general sentiment towards the Quinfall because when I first looked at the Quinfall, watching the gameplay and knowing the facts just around that game... Uh, yeah, it didn't look good. Like, I still don't think it looks that good. Dubious is the word to yeah, best describe okay. what I felt about the project. Um, I'm a bit torn right now for that reason. Like, yeah. there's some huge red flags when it comes to this MMO. Three years, like I've said, is a very short time to develop a game of the scale, about half the time of what most large studios require to make an MMO. Similarly, 56 people is a very small development team size to produce an MMO. And technically, yeah, the developer hasn't released a game yet. This would be their first, and maybe this could just be one of those investor bait-and-switch scams. We've seen some of those uh, fairly recently, if you've recalled, just the other month with uh, the game known as the day before they no longer but it doesn't matter that's my perspective is that it doesn't matter because it is so what if the game is a scam you buy the game and if it's a scam you get your money back and you refund it who cares that's how i see it 
fantastic. My honest expectations right now, uh, when Quinfall launches later this month, I expect mm -hmm. it's going to be very large, as they say. I've got no reason to deny their claim that the map is uh, just over 2,000 square kilometers. But I also suspect it'll be very likely a majority of that map will be empty, given that time span of three years and a development team of 56 people. Not a lot of time, not a lot of devs to make an MMO 10 times the size of World of Warcraft and actually fill that with interesting content. It'll probably be mostly- I think that it'll probably just say, yeah. He's going to say procedural. procedural yeah. Mostly empty landscapes. Yep. Also uh, further enforced by the dev's stated focus on using AI for development. We just got a, we got a bunch of uh, heavily procedurally generated landscape that they've stretched mm -hmm. out to a large uh, square footage, right? And I want to add as well, um, I'm, I'm not delusional here because yes, I agree. Looking at the gameplay doesn't look particularly great for what they've shown of Quinfall. I would say the combat in particular seems not satisfying. I can feel the floatiness and lack of impact just from watching this footage. Many animations are quite janky if they're present at all. Uh, we're seeing a lot it's of- It's very hard to make games like this have weight of impact because they're designed to be played by multiple people. And like the games that do have strong weight of impact, like things like God of War or, uh, or, or Elden Ring or something like that, these are all multiplayer, or sorry, single player games. Stiff movement here, almost as if everyone's got like a, a bad back or something. And initially, yeah, I didn't include the Quinfall on my upcoming MMOs of 2024 video because I thought there was no way in heck that the game was releasing, given that I knew it had only been in and production. And it's coming out on January 30th this month. So in 22, 28 days, we're going to be playing this game for three years. I just Holy put it on a fuck. similar timeline to all those other indie MMOs wow. that we've seen come and go this past decade. And looking further into the game and watching all the footage they've released, that didn't leave me terribly hopeful either. Some of the visuals are nice, sure, uh, but most of the rest of everything else looks rough. Uh, character models look rough. Animations, mm -hmm. like I said, look really stiff and floaty. And it, it, it just, like, honestly, the animations and everything like that like, I care about that a bit, but, like, again, to me, if the combat is good, if I can play the combat, that's all I care about. Closed beta is on the 30th, not the full game. Thanks. I, yeah, I, I was wrong. Yeah, it's closed beta, not the full game floaty. Environmental details are quite lacking, and the combat, it looks, it looks bad. I'll just say it. The combat looks bad from what they've shown. But then, after learning about and seeing footage of Kyra Online, it makes me think twice. It does. If they can make that game in one year, open it up into beta, and have it, this be the yeah. the, the result of that, and have people playing it, and apparently That's enjoying it, then impressive. I don't know. Maybe three years has been enough time for Quinfall. I just hope that the combat that they've shown us is something that is getting severely worked on because it looks... That's what every MMO falls short on is combat. Except for the Korean MMOs. Then they nail the combat, but in order to do the combat, you have to spend money. It just looked really bad from what we've seen. If anything, I would it's actually like pick say one. that ideally they've taken a lot from Kyra and put it into Quinfall, and then that can make mm -hmm. up for this tight turnaround time of three years. In fact, I'm pretty sure, like watching a lot of footage of both of those games, I'm pretty sure I've seen very many similar looking spells, attack animations, and abilities between the two games. Nearly identical, I swear, watching a bunch of that Kyra, Kyra Online foot Kyra, how, how do you pronounce that? Watching a bunch of the footage yeah. of their last MMO, I'm like, those spells look like the spells that I've seen in the Quinfall stuff. So that, of course that would be like the silver lining, if anything. Like what they've worked on, what they started yeah. working on for Kyra Online wasn't totally scrapped when they moved into Quinfall. And I don't know, maybe that just means we get a good MMO. That's really all, that's all we're hoping for, right? Uh, we'll be finding out very, very soon in just a few weeks, actually. As mentioned, the Quinfall is set to enter Steam Early Access on January. And keep in mind that like, like for example, PAX Day, like the combat was placeholder. So if these guys say, hey, we're not ready to really show the combat, the combat's kind of just bullshit, we want to just kind of let people get around in the world and see how, how things work, then that's fine too. January 30th, I am still not expecting a lot because even though learning about their past game and seeing their past game doesn't change the fact that Quinfall itself, from what they've shown, doesn't look terribly good. Who knows? We will see very soon. As usual... I'm keeping my expectations low on this one, but I'm hoping for the best. And you know yeah. what? I love being surprised. I hope Quinfall surprises me in a good way. Uh, I don't care. Because I win no matter what. If the game is garbage, I make videos about it being garbage. If the game is good, I make videos about it being good. It doesn't matter what happens. The only thing that matters is that it happens. We'll find out soon.
But that does it for today. Thank you, as always, for watching. Hope you enjoyed the vid. See you guys next time, right? Take it easy. There it is.